Welcome to Fight News Now. I'm John Pollock. Riding shotgun is John Ramdeen. There's a lot going on in the world as a whole, John Ramdeen, but we focus on mixed martial arts here on a daily basis. I guess off the top, we should address what is going on with the potential sale of the UFC. And it was Jeremy Botter that reported this at Flow Combat that a bid has been accepted. Uh, one of the bids that was submitted last week. He is reporting that's for $4.2 billion. Mm -hmm. The UFC has come out. They are denying yes. that the company has been sold. Certainly, this feels like this is all in play and this could very well uh, turn out to be w what happens. But I think we're, we're in a state right now, Jeremy Botter is standing by his reporting. The UFC, in a situation like this, a massive story of this level and this, all the ramifications, they certainly are not going to be confirming this, even if it's true, when it's not on their timetable. Yeah, well, I mean, the UFC released an internal email that went out. You can go see it online. They're saying the UFC is not sold. As a matter of fact, they want to go after the media and any sources that are reporting this. But as you pointed out, the UFC isn't sold. They've accepted a deal, which does not mean that there's the a difference sold. between the two yes. accepting a bid and this thing fully being sold. So um, it's important to note that that difference as well. So that's obviously I mean, if that happens and it, it is officially announced by the UFC, it could be the biggest story in mixed martial arts history. I think it will be. Yeah, it's a huge story. I mean, considering where the UFC came from, the Zufa purchased UFC, which was back in 2001 for $2 million. They spent somewhere between 40 and $50 million, you know, trying to build the sport of mixed martial arts. And of course, after the Ultimate Fighting, after the, uh, the Ultimate Fighter reality series, things kind of blew up. So going from spending $2 million and then spending 40 or 50 million, now possibly getting $4.2 billion. It is really remarkable considering that, you know, a little over a, the sport isn't completely legal everywhere in the world so for them to have this major sports organization that they got tough that they're going to get 4.2 billion dollars for is quite a remarkable task all right well we have other news as well regarding a canadian in george st pierre he did appear on the mma hour on monday with ariel Hawani and says he is ready to come back he is ready to fight before we discuss how big of a news item that is. You guys were in Ottawa speaking with a number of individuals in the fight game about George St. Pierre returning, and we're gonna hear from those people now. Listen, GSP, he's been out for a while. He wants an easy fight. He got a title at the same time. I mean, good for him. No, no power to him. I think it'd be exciting to see him beat up his man. Man, I would love to see, I like that fight for him, you know? Some of the other ones, like uh, Nate Diaz, when that was getting talked about, I didn't think that made sense. I don't see how that could be different than the Nick Diaz fight. Uh, but a Bisping or a Lawler, I think, is a, is a good move and an exciting fight, a new kind of uh, thing for him, moving up a weight, maybe being a two-division champ. I think that's something that could get him even going even more and something that would be an exceptional, you know? How many people have won two titles, two different weight classes? So. Yeah, George. Good deal. Yeah. That would be awesome. Uh, well, George definitely beat him. His, his takedown and his top control, man. He's just he's, he's so good. He's so good mixing his striking with his, with his takedowns and, and controlling people. He, yeah, he, I mean, he's not a finisher. He knows he's really going to knock people up, but he just grinds you. To, and, and Bisming, he'll just, he'll just overpower him, take him down, do, do the GSP to him. Yeah, of course. He, I'm a huge uh, George fan. I would love to love to see him come back. Love to see him fight Robbie at, at 70. You know, I think that's a fight a lot of people would love to see. Um, but, yeah, who doesn't want to see George come back? That's a really interesting fight, but Bisping is also the bigger guy, so I'm interested to see if um, GSP can can match the size and match the speed, which he should because he's a smaller guy. So it'll be interesting to see if he matches the speed of Bisping and if he can get a hold of him because if he times the, the, the takedown perfectly, I think that's going to be, even though GSP has been gone forever, I think he comes back. I think he can pull up a, an upset and show, like, I'm GSP, I'm the greatest welterweight of all time, and I can, I can still come back after a two-year layoff and do this again. As a fan, this fight doesn't make sense to me at all. Um, nothing, uh, you know, G George St. Pierre is one of my favorite fighters, uh, period. But I think that uh, giving him a fight against somebody who just, you know, got, you know, got all these big wins and et cetera, et cetera. I think that George St. Pierre needs some other fight to begin with because we didn't see him in, in a cage for a really, really long time. And uh, it would be nice to see him uh, fight somebody else, not Michael Bisping. You know? Any Canadian, any sports fan, actually any UFC fan around the world would love to see George come back. Uh, it's no secret that that you know he he was the most, if not one of the most uh, iconic and successful fighters the UFC's ever seen. 
I respect Bisbing a lot. You know, one, he's, I, I think he's a truly 100% clean fighter. Like, I don't think he even takes aspirin. You know what I mean? He's a 100% real fighter. He has the heart of a fighter. He has the, he has the mind of a fighter. He would never do anything, you know, outside of the, the rules, I don't think. And uh, I think George has that same spirit. So, and he's not a huge middleweight. You know, there are bigger middleweights. Not all middleweights are the same size. I think it's a good size for George. And if George wants to do the battle and Bisbing wants to do the battle, I'm all for it. All right, so there you have it. The fight that George is certainly uh, positioning himself much for is the Michael Bisping fight at 185 pounds for the championship, which is interesting. He also said in that same interview on the MMA Hour that he could make lightweight. He said no problem, which is uh, somewhat surprising, I feel, to imagine him fighting at 155. But the bigger takeaway here is that there don't appear to be any reservations on George's part. He wants to come back. It's a matter of just working out a deal. And that becomes interesting because he left when he had great sponsors and big sponsors. And now it's a different climate for fighters in the UFC. But it looks like this is going to happen. And mm -hmm. it's yet another card the UFC can play this year on top of a Nick Diaz return, on top of a p possible fight with Fedor coming into the promotion, with a Ronda Rousey yeah. return. It's incredible what they have at, at their disposal potentially for the rest of this year and into next. Yeah, true, and uh, you can see why George would be interested in this fight. You, you bring up all the, the sponsorship talks, that will clearly be a part of the negotiating when it comes to getting a fight with Michael Bisping, but the reality is if he's coming back, to, I mean, George has been in this game for so long. He got into the sport where there was little money to be made and now it has exploded, and he understands the type of star that he is. He understands that Mike, Michael Bisping is one of the biggest stars in the world, and he will do a fantastic job selling this fight. And I think that's what George is interested in. The guy loves to fight. He's a martial artist. He wants to get in there. He's never shied away from facing the best fighters on the planet, save for Anderson Silva, the fight that never materialized, one that fans were hoping for for years and years. But I think this is an excellent fight for George. You know, we've been away from the game for, for a little while. But Michael Bisping, although he's coming off two excellent wins, you know, not a spring chicken, sustained a lot of damage throughout his career. So you can see how this fight would be interesting for both parties. Michael Bisping is such an attractive opponent for yeah. so many yeah. people at various weight classes. Here is a guy that I think a lot of top-level fighters feel they can beat. Yeah. And on top of that, you get an opponent that you know is going to very <laughs> much promote a fight it's a dream scenario for a lot of these people, and you can justify as deep down as Dan Henderson at 185 pounds in terms of, and it's gonna upset some of the other middleweights that Dan Henderson's even being thought about. I think he's gonna put be put on the back burner yeah. because George St. Pierre puts his name in the hat. That's another big fight. Is it the best fight for George to come back for, John? Yeah, I, are there other options that are more appealing to you? I, I think uh, from if you're a part of George St. Pierre's camp, this is the fight that makes the most sense. A. It's another weight class, and there's a championship fight. If George can, you know, what happened to all the size issues? Uh, well, sure, the size issues, but I don't think he cares. I mean, that's well, it's one of the things that there's a philosophy in, in the gym and, and TriStar and many gyms that it's like it doesn't really matter. We come here to fight, and that's what it comes down it to. Did, it did matter when they were discussing sure. Anderson Silva. Sure, but at the same time, one of the things, the reasons why George left is said because it's a dirty sport. We know that it's a dirty sport. Now with USADA, we, you know, we know Brock Lesnar has been uh, tested five times. Times in the last couple of weeks, George is confident, and you know he's confident because he's going to be a part of that conversation. It's oh, a great point, and Michael Bisping, you know, is very tied to that exactly. movement of being clean. And I think you hear from the clips there that I mean, regardless of what people think of Michael Bisping, they know that this guy has been clean, and he has fought a number of guys that were on TRT at the time. It's a it's a big fight. I think George's return is a big fight, regardless of the weight class. But this is the biggest fight. I, th I really do think because. Again, moving up in weight, fighting for a title against a guy that knows how to sell a fight, and that's what it comes down to. Make the most money, uh, be exposed to the most amount of people. You challenge yourself as a martial artist, and again, this is a fight that deserves to be in a stadium. Is there any hesitation on your part that when, when George left, he very much talked about the head trauma he was concerned about, the way in which he performed against Johnny Hendricks, he took a lot of damage in that fight, He's now that many more years older. It was November of 2013 we last saw him fight. That's a long time away from this sport. Is there any of that concern that George comes back here and it's he outlined his own concerns? Yeah, uh, maybe there's, there's concerns. I mean, this is a combat sport, so you have to be concerned for your well-being, for your safety. However, you look a, a year and a half ago, and if you would have said you fast, for, fast forward a year and a half and Michael Bisping 
at 35 or 36 or however old he was, would have a win over Anderson Silva and a stoppage victory over this genetic freak and Luke Rockhold, people would think you were crazy. But some, sometimes in mixed martial arts or combat sports, the older you get, the better you fight. And that's what we're seeing from both Michael Bisping. And I expect that we'll see a better version uh, of George St. Pierre when he gets back inside of the cage. This is kind of just guesswork at this point. But what would be the ideal timeline for you? And the the scenario in which this would happen, would th could this be your, your Madison Square Garden main event? Do you think that that's too soon to have George St. Pierre come back? I mean, what, what would you think is the ideal scenario here? Because Michael Bisping is not a young guy. He wants to fight, and there's no shortage of possible opponents for him at this point, and we've just added a major name to that list. Yeah, and I think that's, if you ask Michael Bisping, that's the name at the top of the list because that's going to make him the most money. Yep. You know, why did you get into the game? You got into the game to be the best fighter of all time, and that means being a champion. Well, he's currently the UFC champion. I know when it comes to money, even though he wasn't a champion not that long ago, Michael Bisping had made more than most people in mixed martial arts. So I think right now it's just focusing on the biggest fights. I talk about his age. Who knows how long he's going to be in the sport. I don't think he can guarantee that he's going to be fighting as long as Dan Henderson and Randy Couture fought. So you try to get as many fights as humanly possible in. And I wouldn't be surprised if we saw this fight before the end of the year. Yeah, and what a, what a difference this makes. I mean, if this is the direction they go in. I think some people will feel for Dan Henderson because that kind of I takes know. him out of this. I mean, he's the biggest loser in all of this in terms of he was so close to even rankings aside. There was a story there to be it told, was, yeah. but George supersedes that one. Yeah, and that's just the reality is what are the biggest fights? I think Dan Henderson is number two. Is it the rematch with Luke Rockhold, Vitor Belfort, Jacques Ray, Yoel Romero? No, I think Dan Henderson, because of what we saw the first time, the reality show. You're confident he fights again if it's, if it's, you had this kind of dangling out Dan there. Dan Henderson? Yes. I think Dan Henderson fights. This is what the guy does. And I think if you give him interesting matchups and big opponents, the Dan Henderson would fight. But it would be so nice to see him fight for the middleweight championship again. All right. This is obviously a number of big stories in play. And it all goes into UFC International Fight Week, which is happening. And their first of three straight nights is Thursday, July the 7th with that card airing here on Fight Network, headlined by your lightweight championship bout between Rafael Dos Anjos and Eddie Alvarez. Amazing.